energy 808 to cutting edge. And we're talking about electric vehicles, the best and worst places in the country to own electric vehicles. And thus, that means that the, the places which incentivize them, that's what we're really trying to get. Uh, from Julianne Olander, she's with Bumper.com. And Bumper.com has made a report on this question of the best and the worst places to own, to buy, to use an electric vehicle. Welcome to the show, Julianne. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Tell us, tell us about, before we get to the report, tell us about bumper.com. Uh, what do you guys do? Where are you? Uh, what are your activities and operations? Uh, well, bumper.com has an a easy to access uh, website um, and it's a great tool for plugging in the VIN number for a vehicle. Um, if you want to find out information about your own car and the maintenance schedule, you can Find out information about that. If you're looking to buy a vehicle and want to get some background information on it, find out if it's been in any accidents or if there are any major red flags to look out for. Um, also great for if you're planning um, to sell your car, trying to time, you know, looking at the current market value of it and trying to time when the best, uh, when the best uh, opportunity is to sell your car. <clears throat> What's the relationship with the Blue Book? Do you have the Blue Book on or access to the Blue Book from your site? Um, it, uh, it has similar information, you know, accident records, theft records, um, any wins on the car, sales records. So it's pretty, it's pretty comprehensive and has a lot of, uh, a lot of information. You know, I've seen a lot of ads, um, on television over the past year, maybe I wasn't watching before about companies in the United States that will a sell you a car, including used cars. Uh, online um, and B uh, that will um, you know let you make those kinds of decisions uh, you know what it's worth and whether it's been in accidents what what the public record is on that car um, and C you know buying cars uh, all sides of the issue and there's I would guess offhand uh, across my path maybe three or four of these companies and I surmise from that that there must be more action going on now about buying and selling cars outside of dealerships. Am I right? Uh, yeah, for sure. Now is a you know it's a great time to be selling your used cars. We get more you know now with uh, supply chain issues and difficulty in you know waiting for a new car. Um, it's a great time to buy a used car and, and shop around. Why? <clears throat> why though? Why is now a great time? Uh, is oh, it, is it because new cars are hard to come by because of the chip problem or what? Yeah, I think newer cars are harder to, to come by. Their uh, dealers are able to, you know, tack on higher higher prices right now when there's a demand. And, um, but if you, you know, have a spare vehicle that's sitting around and you're looking to sell it at some point, now might be a great time because the, you know, prices have probably never been higher on um, uh, used, uh, used cars. Yeah, I know. You get more now for it than you know you might when um, if people don't have an alternative you know if, if buying a new car is not really going to work out for them at the moment but they they need something right now then um, you're going to be turning to to use vehicles. Yeah, strikes me also that <clears throat> over the past year, year and a half, when people have been locked in, locked up, locked. Lockdown, lockdown. <laughs> at home, they haven't spent as much um, on optional, you know, uh, choices, and especially big choices like cars. Uh, so they avoid that. At the same time, they don't spend, you know, other regular items. They stay at home and they eat. <clears throat> they eat. And they watch television uh, and a lot of them do that and work and that's pretty much it they don't spend a lot of money so they've been accumulating money and i think if you looked at uh, you know the, the accumulation of savings uh, over the past year for a lot of people not everybody but for a lot of people you find out that their bank account is flush and they're sitting around there uh, wondering what to do with that money now that they believe, and this may or may not be accurate, they believe that we're coming out of COVID. So I suspect, and I like your thought on it, is that the reason that buying cars is um, popular right now is that people are, um, they have the money, they want to spend the money, and a car is a great place to spend the money. Is that right? 
Uh, yeah, I think some people, certainly their bank accounts have benefited over the last uh, couple of years, but for others, no, we might be, you know, in recovery right now, in financial recovery for, for many, many Americans. Um, but for those who have been fortunate to have steady work during the pandemic and have been able to reduce their expenditures, um, you know, not driving as much, not spending, you know, in the hundreds of dollars in gas a month. Um, and, and being able to reduce other expenses like eating out uh, for some people, you know, eating out might take a huge chunk of their budget. Um, so, yeah, certainly a, a portion of the population has um, been able to save and um, is optimistic about the future and might be ready to, to make that purchase now. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to ask you about was electric cars. <clears throat> you know, in Hawaii, we, we've been talking about electric cars. I want to say that in a population of maybe a million cars, which we love cars in Hawaii, love cars, <laughs> more than Southern California. The best way to get around. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, we, um, you know, we, we, we have, I think, 16 or maybe 17,000 electric, electric cars. As a percentage, it's really not that many. And uh, we have a new initiative that the utility, the Hawaiian Electric, just announced they want to put a lot of uh, you know, charging stations in. I say a lot. It's not that many, but it's more than we ever did before. Yeah, right. And so uh, I guess what I'm really asking you is how, in, in a national way, how, how have electric cars been doing uh, in general? Can, can you comment on that? Um, how have they been doing in terms of um, demand and, and sales? Yes. Or, yes. Um, well, I know that in Hawaii, um, I think it's, you know, the demand has been increasing tremendously, um, far more than um, the infrastructure. And so you definitely have um, solid demand um, and desire for electric vehicles. Um, and... Um, you know, you have the the base, uh, you know, foundation of infrastructure, you, um, and you've had a lot of growth in the past five years as well. And it's great to see that you have more more planned growth, which will double or triple the infrastructure. Um, and so, it's just a matter of I think the infrastructure being able to keep up with the demand. Demand has far out you know out increased the, the existing infrastructure, and so it'll just be important to try and get that. Get that up to speed in the state. When you say infrastructure, you mean charging stations, right? Charging stations, yes. And um, not just charging stations, but how many ports are on a charging station. That's that's really important as well because you could have, you know, one charging station and one port. So that means only one person can charge up at a time and the next person's got to wait an hour for that person to leave. So the more ports you could put on a charging station, obviously it'd be the more convenient for uh, for the drivers. So yeah, you showed us your, your website and you talked about the various things that bumper.com does and they're, they're not all directly related to electric vehicles, um, but you have um, made a report, you made a survey report, done some investigation, some analysis on electric cars around the country in order to rate the best and worst places in the country uh, to own one and use one and buy one and so forth. Uh, why did you do that? Why now? Why this report? Well, we recognize that there is a growing demand and acceptance of electric vehicles that um, money um, is being poured into uh, infrastructure in general right now. And electric uh, electric uh, infrastructure is definitely is a, a part of that equation. And so we were really interested in knowing, well, where's the best place to you know, what are the top places of owning electric vehicle and which states, you know, have a lot more work to do to, to get there. And so uh, Hawaii fell in the, the top 10. And, um, you know, I looked at um, a number of factors. I realized that infrastructure was part of it and a very important part of it, but also there's the incentives as well. Uh, people like to know what affects their pocketbook directly. Um, I can go into the different uh, components of that if you. Oh yeah, sure. I'd like to know how you conducted the report, and then we we'll talk about the the conclusions you came to. Yeah, okay. what, what methodology? What data did you collect, and how did you collect it? 
Well, I collected all uh, publicly available data. Um, some of it coming from like the alternative fuels data center where you can go and um, put in your location and find out all the addresses of all the charging stations. So if you're you know, planning out your driving route and you're going to a state that maybe doesn't have as many, um, you want to know exactly where those, those are. So you can plug that into your, your GPS um, and other areas. It's not as important because you know you're going to come across them you know, pretty frequently on your drive. Um, so I looked at a number of factors, not just the existing infrastructure, but also um, realizing that, you know, you can have existing infrastructure, but what is the new growth, which is really kind of measuring how accepting is that state of uh, electric vehicles and providing easy access and convenience to the electric vehicle drivers. So not just looking at the existing infrastructure, but the growth in the infrastructure, looking at uh, how many ports are on the uh, charging station, uh, which just makes it you know, more convenient for uh, drivers. Um, looked at a number of, um, also the, the, you know, the, just the relative ranking of um, electric vehicles as a percentage of all motor vehicles in the state. And so as you pointed out, it's only about 1% in Hawaii, but that's better than most other states. If California mm. ranks first, but Hawaii is right there as well. And so most other states, it's way less than 1%. So, um, and I think that's only going to grow for states like California and Hawaii and others as well. Um, then I also looked at a number of incentives. So price of gas as an incentive for owning an electric vehicle. If gas is high in your state as it is in Hawaii, just like in California, um, you know, we have the highest gas prices in the country. And, but that's, uh, for electric vehicles, that's a good thing because that, you know, is an incentive to consider alternative uh methods of transportation and um you know who likes to spend time lining up at the gas pump and you know especially those lines at costco can be pretty long um and you know you, you see that price right away maybe 50 80 dollars 100 dollars depending on the size of your vehicle to, to fill up whereas um even though hawaii has high electricity rates as california does as well um it costs about $95 to fill up your, to charge up your car and go a thousand miles. So while uh, traditional, you know, gas powered, diesel powered vehicles, maybe it costs you $95 to go uh, 300 miles. <clears throat> um, you know, it might be costing you $95 to drive a thousand miles on an electric vehicle in Hawaii. So even though you have a higher price of electricity compared to other states like Louisiana has one of the least expensive, um, uh, electricity rates um but yeah it's not necessarily a great place for electric vehicles right now because of other factors lacking charging stations for example um so just trying to balance out these sets of factors and um creating a state ranking for each of them kind of adding up all those rankings and then re-ranking based on infrastructure and incentives and then creating an overall ranking that's where uh, hawaii came in at number 10. Hmm. Let me unpack that uh, some of that with you. Okay, <clears throat> we had we had a state tax credit for um, anyone who bought an electric vehicle until about I want to say three or four years ago, maybe maybe around that, and the legislature in its infinite wisdom terminated that, mm -hmm. and of course uh, the number of cars uh, electric vehicles sold. In my in my observation of it, um, either went flat or declined for the lack of that incentive. Would that be would that be something that you would include in the metric as a metric or maybe a subjective metric on whether a state is a good place? Uh, I, if somebody's going to give me you know several thousand dollars to buy the car, I will be incentivized, and yeah. I have not been because they terminated the credit. Yeah, no, it's. Uh... That's a good point. Um, I, I looked at just the you know sheer number of incentives, uh, you know rebates and and credits and things like that, but not the dollar value. And that would definitely be something to look at uh, for the future. Um, but it's also a measure that's changing for different states, as you pointed out. Hawaii terminated that uh, that rebate, um, and you know the, while there is a federal uh, tax credit. Um, 
my understanding is that um, is per manufacturer. And once you know you reach sort of a threshold in Teslas, for example, then there's no more of those uh, tax rebates available for that particular manufacturer. So you move to the next one. But if you had your heart set on a Tesla, well, you're out of luck for the um, you know the federal <laughs> tax credit. So um, yeah, states I think overall could do better at incentivizing. Um, potential yeah. new buyers to, to, to turn to electric instead. Yeah, to me, I mean, it's a, it's a natural flow. It's just, it's a logic thing. If you want to deal with climate change, then you reduce uh, fossil fuel. And to reduce fossil fuel, you have electric cars powered by electricity, which is not generated by fossil fuel. And you incentivize people to buy them. Then if I was king of the universe, I would make this happen almost immediately. I would have every, because I know how much fossil fuel comes out of these cars, is used by these cars, and how much greenhouse gas is generated. And so if we really were serious around the globe, like at, at COP26 in Glasgow, we would find a way to make everybody get off fossil fuel in cars right now and for generation of electricity also, and put them on electric cars, but that hasn't happened. And my next question to you is, so in the Build Back Better bill, which is uh, now pending in the Senate, you know, it's like, uh, what, remember St. Sebastian in the Bible, uh, where he was shot with arrows, a million arrows. I expect the Build Back Better bill is going to look like St. Sebastian in a week or two. <laughs> with all kinds, all kinds of, they're gonna, they're gonna slice him up pretty good. But in there, you know, being optimistic about it, there's a credit for electric cars and charging stations too. Um, and I don't know the mechanics of how this money is going to be distributed state by state. But is it fair to say that this will have a uh, a, a, an effect which is proportionate to the population of the state, and therefore it will have essentially equal effect in all states. Do you know? Have you thought about that? Would that be in this report or the next one? Um, it would be in the next report. Um, but yeah, that is that's a very interesting concept to think about because yeah, we don't know exactly how it's. I don't know exactly how it's getting divided amongst the states, and if. Um, let's say for electric vehicle infrastructure, is that getting divided amongst the states too? Or does that favor certain states over others, which would definitely um, play a role in, you know, re-rank um, states in a couple of years and see where we're at, uh, which is, you know, something we're definitely interested in doing is looking towards the future and seeing how things are, how states are, are changing over time. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a great, it's a great point. And um, I don't really have a clear, answer where those dollars are are going exactly and how they're being distributed amongst the states. Yeah, right. And, and, and how and how the stuff. states distribute them um, among the people. Um, because right. not all states are as efficient as other states. And some of them um, are going to redirect the money to um, other other places which are not necessarily intended by the federal legislation. So um, you, you know you would have to make if, if you wanted to get you know, get down to the detail on that, you'd have to make a, an evaluation of how, how effective the state was in distributing the money for the purposes right. intended. Right, each okay. state might have different, um, you know, needs as well. Some states really need to put it into roads because, you know, the roads are full of holes and, it's, you know, taking a beating from winter weather. So different states might have different, uh, different priorities on how that money is spent. The other thing I was going to ask you about is, um, and it's been a subject of discussion for as long as Hawaii has been talking about uh, electric cars and charging stations, is the um, extraordinary difference in, in, as an incentive of the low uh, low voltage, I guess I would call it, the low voltage charging station versus the higher voltage charging station, uh, the one where I, I forget level level two or three or something um, and that if, if you have the lower, you know, it has to be like for hours and hours, which makes it difficult in a commercial setting. If you have the higher, then it's almost as fast, not quite as filling your tank with gas or PS hydrogen. Um, but um, I just I, I wonder if that's a part of the metric here. 
Um, well, I looked at the overall number of charging stations, you know, um, that are, are, are public stations. So that includes level one, level two and higher. Um, you know, level one is, is typically that's the charger that comes with your vehicle when you buy it. Um, it's the basic, uh, basic charger. Um, it'll get the job done overnight, but, you know, typically it's about, um, you can just, you know, you plug it into a regular outlet, but it gets about, uh, takes for one hour of charging. I think it gets you four miles. So, but when you move up to uh, level two is an upgrade and some companies I think are starting to offer level two chargers. Those are the ones that, you know, require a 40 amp circuit to plug into. So like your washer dryer at home, that has that sort of prong on it and you plug it in. I um, mean, that's a lot quicker. So I think it's around maybe 32 miles when you're charging it for an hour. Um, I believe a lot of the, and then commercial, um, the level three and level four, you know, higher, higher levels, those are not for home consumption. Those are not for you know uh, a residence. Those are more for commercial and industrial settings and require um, different level, you know, a DC level of um, electricity. So they're not suitable for the home. So I think really the best you can do at home is invest in that level two charger, which you know usually requires a you know licensed electrician to set up the you know hook up the electricity. Um, properly, but you'll get a much quicker, much quicker charge. Yeah, P.S. You have to have a an existing electrical system to support uh, the the additional voltage that is that level two would require. Yeah. Um, but I want to ask you something else about that, and it's um, this this you know why electric is putting in or is is seeking permission to put in it. It's part of the utility ratepayer you know, initiatives. So it means that rate pay payers in general will, will pay the cost of all these charging stations. And I guess there are hundreds contemplated. And I'm, I want to say that I may be inaccurate about this, but roughly half of them are the lower voltage and the other half are the higher voltage. In other words, they're not all high. But it seems to me, and I'd be interested in your thought about this, that if you wanted to give people some uh, range anxiety comfort. Yeah, okay. You could give them the lower voltage and they'll be a little more comfortable about leaving their home and not worrying about getting stranded somewhere. But if you wanted to give them an incentive to buy an electric vehicle, you want to give them the highest possible voltage so they don't have to hang around for hours while it charges. Um, they, you know, they would like a, a, as near immediate a charge as possible. And if I, if as a automobile salesman, I tell them that they'd be much more likely um, if I tell them that, you know, we have hundreds of these stations going in, not only will you be able to avoid range anxiety from a psychological point of view, but also, you know, you'll have immediate charge wherever you go, it'd be beautiful. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, yeah, I definitely think being able to provide a higher level charge makes sense. And maybe that's a, you know, an add-on package to purchasing the, the vehicle. We'll give you the lower level, but you know, you gotta pay some extra if you want the, uh, the higher level charger. But if you're able to plug into uh, a public uh, charging station somewhere and maybe only, you know, pay a few dollars to, to charge up, um, that's certainly very convenient as well. And the, the more commercial and industrial uh, charging stations are gonna be, you know, it's gonna be a lot quicker to charge up. So that would be probably better for you anyways, if, you know, unless you have a lot of time on your hands to wait for the vehicle to charge up, it's, you wanna do it as quickly as possible while you're running errands, you're grocery shopping, it's nice to know, hey, I can grocery shop for 20 minutes and stand in line for five minutes and come out and my car's charged up and not have to worry about it for, a couple of days or you know depending on how much driving you do if you don't do very much driving maybe you don't have to worry about it to the next week but um yeah, yeah. Well, you you mentioned before that uh, you take a look at the locations of these charging stations if i put the charge and some people have talked about this if i put the charging station at a gas station okay which it seems like a rational mm -hmm. logical place to put it um that may be a, a bit of a distance from say a shopping center, may not, may not be that close. And I may be sitting there in my car waiting for a long time before it's charged. But if I, if I put it 
you know, in some reserved stalls in a shopping center, and some people have done this in Hawaii, uh, then I can go shopping. In fact, it, it helps the economy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's a great point. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it's just no, you are to, seeing, yeah, you are right. seeing them going more at, more in shopping centers and commercial areas because it makes complete sense to, to do that. Um, I think gas stations make sense uh, when people are, you know, going on longer trips. So maybe, uh, you know, at the, the major stops where people are fueling up anyways, getting some a food, you know, taking a food break, um, you know, stretching their legs uh, on a trip. It makes sense to have charging stations at, at those locations where people would be stopping for, you know, those types of reasons. But uh, yeah, I think you, you are going to see them more and more at uh, shopping malls and uh, restaurants and, and places like that where it would it would just be convenient to be able to, you know, top it off um, while you're eating. Right, especially on a fast charger. Yeah. So, um, you know, one, one thing is that the um, dealerships uh, in Hawaii, and I suppose this is so everywhere, um, are still focused on, on fossil fuel cars. Um, yeah, sure, you know, we'll, we'll bring one in if you want. Um, but let me tell you about all the wonderful features we have on these fossil fuel. And they do have great features in, you know, Detroit and, and uh, Japan and wherever else, South Korea, you know, they're trying to do that. They're trying to make these fossil fuel cars just wonderful. And there's a lot of sale points. And so when you go to a dealership, uh, what you're going to get is a, let me show you the fossil fuel car. And they're not going to push the electric uh, car that much. But uh, one thing that seems to be emerging, this goes back to the, you know, the point of those um, databases on your bumper.com website, is um, I think what's happening here is the, the dealerships are being circumvented, you know, by sales that are directly off the web. So if I can get on a, um, you know, a website and buy an electric vehicle at a a price that is not a negotiated, you know, dealership type, psychological pressure type situation. I know what the cost is. It's the same everywhere. Uh, and I just push some buttons and now I have uh, an, an electric car en route to me almost immediately without going through the aggravation and anxiety of dealing with a salesman, should I say, at a dealership. Um, then um, I'm better off. And in fact, I'm incentivized to buy that car a lot quicker uh, than I would if I had to go and, and see all the bells and whistles on fossil fuel cars. What do you think? Is that, a, is that a real possibility here? Is it happening? Will it happen? Will it feed into your uh, analysis of this? Uh, well, I think people will still want to be able to test drive vehicles. I mean, we... We like to have choices and um, we like to have choices in, you know, what type of car we, we buy. And, you know, there's increasingly more and more choices of electric vehicles, but I think people are still going to want to take a car for a spin before they, they buy it. And that's going to require a trip to a dealership. So I don't think that dealerships are going to go away. Um, I think if somebody knows exactly the type of car they want, it's certainly an incentive to be able to do that purchase online without having to spend two, three, four hours at a dealership because it takes a long time to go through that process. Um, but if you can purchase it on the car and let all that paperwork take place in the background without you having to physically be there, I think that's that's a great in incentive. Um, but you know, perhaps the dealerships will do that for the gas and diesel cars as well. You know. I don't see why that can't go in that direction of online sales um, or any type of vehicle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me, let me, I just say that um, th th there will be issues going forward about the availability of uh, rare earths like cobalt uh, mm -hmm. for batteries and, uh, and, and the availability of chips for all the electronics that are in all cars now. Um, and I, and it's hard to anticipate how that's going to, uh, how that's going to affect, um, you know, is it is Hawaii a good place or not so good a place to uh, to own an electric car? But I, so we, we can't cover that. There's, there's, it's too it's too vague right now. Maybe in another show, Julian, we right. can cover that. But I, I do want to ask you: um, is is uh, number ten good enough? 
Um, did it surprise you in any way that we hit number 10 and not number one? And what can we do to hit number one? Because it's a good thing. Yeah, no, it's it's a great thing to be in the top 10, but I know that Hawaii, um, because you have the existing infrastructure, because you have the demand, um, you know, you can only go so, so far on an island, so um, it's perfectly suited for the distances that you can drive, and um, I think if Hawaii really focuses, when they, I, I know that there's going to be increasing infrastructure in the state, and if why it really focuses on let's get more ports and just make it more convenient um, for drivers and just try and keep pace with the demand for the, the cars because we already have that demand. People in Hawaii already want these types of cars and it's convenient for them to recognize the impacts on the environment that it's a good thing um, and they feel good, you know, about owning an electric car. So you already have population that's supportive of this and so I think just trying to keep pace with that um, demand you know you're um, in a great in a great place for moving way up on the list. Yeah, I, I agree with you in the sense that Hawaii is remote and people always have this thing about trying to keep up with the mainland that's why Hawaii is an early adopter on all kinds of technology this is the kind of technology that they want to adopt uh, and it's really not so much a, a matter of their interest, but uh, the barriers that stand between them and the car. Um, and there are some of those. Okay, so what, what do we have to do as a state, as a legislature, in order to get to number one? What would you recommend to us so that the next time you, you know, uh, do your analysis and calculate your list, we could be number one? What, give us some advice. Um Focus on, you know, putting as many ports as possible on the charging stations, as many as that, you know, that you're allowed and it, that will take. Um, and also focus on the incentives. Um, and, you know, if the price of electricity, you know, that factors into the recharge cost, which is one of the one of the factors, um, because uh, Hawaii does have the highest uh, rates of electricity in the country. Um, and trying to, you know, bridge the difference in price between electric vehicle and a non-electric vehicle that differences dif uh, that differs by state um hawaii's you know, kind of on the not quite the middle of the pack but on the lower middle of the pack um, in terms of the price difference um so i think continuing to be in be able to offer incentives it's, it's great to have you know um some of some incentives like free parking downtown or things like that but i understand that some of those incentives have, have expired um, but I think focusing on um, getting rebates there, because as you pointed out before, uh, once the rebate went away, you know, um, you're not as incentivized to, to mm. purchase that uh, vehicle. So I think really just focusing on the, the, the meeting the demand uh, with the infrastructure, focusing on the number of ports that you put in so that a lot of you know multiple people can charge at the same time and um coming up with more incentives and um not hitting people with high electric bills so you know time of use if you know it, it's so it's not penalizing people for charging you want to penalize people for doing the right thing environmentally and, and you would have similar advice for the other 49 members on that list if you want to do better you know these are the kinds of things you want to focus on yeah it means don't you think that this is a dynamic list and if hawaii doesn't do what you're suggesting it's not that we will remain constant on the list we will probably slide oh, yeah. down right, <laughs> right? <laughs> Right. I mean, some people, some states, you know, have low electrical electrical costs as, you know, something they already have built in, which affects the recharge cost, which, you know, affects a lot of different things. So, um, but yeah, you know, there's definitely the possibility, like you said, this is a dynamic, dynamic process and um, society is always dynamic. And so, yeah, there is a potential for moving up or down. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Julianne, I hope we can catch up with you next time you do one of these lists and see where we are then, because uh, it is it's dynamic in all ways. It's dynamic in Hawaii and it's dynamic rel relative to other states as well. So I hope we can catch up and do another show with you. And I, I, I'd like to stay in touch with you for that purpose. That would be great. Thank Julianne you. Julianne Olander of Bumper.com. Thank you so much for joining us. 